Good afternoon, parents. Good afternoon, students. Good afternoon, colleagues. Good afternoon. It is indeed a pleasure to bring to you as the founder of Prime Math Zoom and a mathematics educator, our first parent workshop. Along with me, we have a co-host, Mrs. Vassal Erskine, who is a teacher of race course primary and infant school. As you prepare your students at home to be conceptually sound with good reasoning skills, there will be four presenters who are veterans in the education system who will provide you with strategies that you can employ in your homes as you help your children with math. I would like to welcome Mrs. Basil Erskine as she will introduce our first presenter. Thank you, Ms. Sims. Good day, parents and colleagues. It's a great pleasure for me to introduce our first presenter who is going to present on the concept of telling time. She is the CEO of the Think Educational Services and an educator who is passionate about nation building. She enjoys working on do-it-yourself DIY projects and was Miss Portland Festival Queen 2015. Parents and colleagues, please help me to welcome with a virtual clap, Miss Tiffany Copes. Thank you, Miss Copes. Good. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I hope that we are all good and well. I am feeling good to be able to share in such a forum. And I'm happy to see so many of you out just in your numbers, just trying to help your children as best as you can. So today I'll be talking about helping your child to tell time. So as a child, I love telling time. I loved, um, and I think the reason why I love telling time was because I liked wearing a watch. You know, I wanted to feel, you know, a little bit more adult than I was. And I felt like having a watch, I felt like I was, you know, in the same league with the persons in my household. All right, but before we even start, Let's start with a little riddle. It's always good to start with something a little, you know, a little bit fun. Um, I'm a classroom teacher, and so I like to start anything that I'm doing with a little joke, something to just um, really soothe the mind and get your mind ready for what I'm about to do, right? Are you ready? All right. So the first yes, thing, ready. come on, and, and you see, because I am a young teacher, right? I'm vibrant. I can't take the daddy daddy. So if you know, if when I talk, I want to hear some responses, right? All right. So let's go. The first thing is the first riddle. What can fly without wings? Time. 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 All right. Everybody brighty? Wait, man. Just wait because I have something special here because I'm telling you this one. I can't get it. This one says, what is at the beginning of the end? The start of eternity at the end of time and space was in the middle of yesterday, but is nowhere in tomorrow. Yes. No, sir. What is going on? The letter E. What is going on? Everybody is getting these answers too quickly. I have to find another one. One more. It's a question you can ask all day long and get completely different but correct answer. What is the question? What time is it? What time is it? All right. And on that note, we are going to start off. All right. So we can go to my first slide. All right. So telling the time is important. It's a skill that we need in our everyday life, right? But sometimes it can be tricky, right? So before your child is even able to tell the time on a real clock, 
they need to understand how time relates to their own experiences, right? So you can start to increase their awareness of time from a young age with simple activities. I know that we are home and we have, they have their devices, but parents, we have to go back to a little bit of outdoor activity to more, to more um, activities where they can use their hands, right? To more tactile activities. So when you're home with your children, try to play with them, try to put away the technology for a little bit, right? And try to introduce them to the concept of learning time. All right, next. So what can I do to help my child? And I know all parents, they want the best for their children. So the first thing you need to do, you need to draw attention to time. You need to mention time at different points. You get up in the morning and you, get, and you go to your child's room, you can say, you know, it's seven o'clock. So they have an idea that when they get up, it's between seven o'clock, 7.30. So even though they don't know the time, they might, when you come in the room in the morning, they might say, mommy, it's seven o'clock. And even if it's not seven, right, they, you're, you're, you're growing awareness around time, right? So, for example, they might have their class at a particular time in the morning. They know it's 7.30, they have class. They know that they have class at 8 o'clock and they have a scheduled system. So they are getting familiar with time. And, of course, I'm always for anything that is fun. Anything that can make children laugh, can make children feel happy and feel good about themselves. And in everything, you can put a little fun in it. Right, parents? You don't like a little fun as well? Yes, ma'am. Yes. yes, of course. And so your children, they require some fun. So some, sometimes some things are a little bit boring and we can put a little life in it. So you're baking, you're baking some you're, uh, a pudding, you're baking some... Um, cookies, right? You set the timer. Let them set it. Tell them you're going to bake for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. So you grow that awareness. You play a board game with sun timer, right? So sun timers sometimes aren't as common, right? But if you can purchase one, it would also be good. And use a stopwatch. Here you can use your technology. You can use your phone. You can use, um, they have stopwatches out there that you can, you can use in order for them to grow awareness for a time. And make sure that your child is confident with numbers. So, of course, if they're going to tell the time, they need to know the numbers on the clock, right? They need to be able to count from 1 to 60, right? As the number 60 is a number that is important when telling time, all right? So we know that 60 seconds make. Come on, parents, I know you know this. 60 one, one hour. One hour. 60 seconds make one minute. One minute. One minute. One minute. One minute. Minutes make one hour. One hour. One hour. So you need to, they need to know these numbers so they are able to tell you these numbers. Practice their five tables, right? Because we know on our clock we are counting by five, and so we need to be able to count by five by you know practicing our five times table. Start with analog clocks. And what is an analog clock, parents? When you talk about an analog clock, what are we referring to? We're talking about the one on the phone. What type of clock we're talking about when we say analog? On the wall. The regular clock on the wall with the, with the numbers and the yeah. hands, right? So we want to tie them off with clocks, analog clocks, instead of the digital one. Like the one on your phone that just tethered the time right here. It's not helping them, right? It's not helping them to read clocks. Right, and we want to get back to that so that they're able to have a good relationship with telling time. Put a clock in your child's bedroom, right? So even though sometimes they might not necessarily know the time when they look up and they see that hand on 12 and they see the short hand on seven, they know it's what, seven o'clock, right? So right then and there, even if it's by root, they are learning the time. And you need to talk about what you regularly do at different times in the day. So you compare and contrast weekdays and weekends. So they know that weekdays, Monday to Friday, they go to school, right? They have their, their after school activities at particular times in the days. 
and they know that on a Saturday it's a weekend, so they're a little bit more relaxed. They don't get up at seven anymore. They get a little bit more time to sleep in and you're building that relationship with time. Also, you use a particular type of language when you're speaking to them, right? We develop their vocabulary by using words like today, yesterday, no, afterwards, because all those words are referring to time. Let your child remind you that it's time to do something, right? So tell your child, remember that you're going to grandma at three o'clock and I'm telling you, especially if that's something that they want to do, they're going to watch it and you tell them, you know, when that long hand goes on 12 and the short hand goes on three, it's three o'clock and it's time to go to grandma, believe me. And trust me that they will never forget that it's three o'clock when that hand, because that's what they really want to do. All right, so I'm employing your parents, try and make learning fun. And sometimes you might think that only teachers alone can teach. No, you can teach your children as well. At home, try to come up with some little activities with them, you know, and I'm sure that many of your parents, you are doing these things at home, right? Yes. I'm, I'm by myself, they're not doing this at home. I am yes. here. Yes. Home doing these yes, things, they right? are. Beautiful. Sometimes. Miss our parents on face on YouTube are really tuning in and they are make, giving a lot of feedback there. They are yes. really tuning in there. They're responding to all your questions. They're giving suggestions. They are very active there on YouTube. Beautiful. So I know and I am sure, right, that my parents out there are helping their children with time. My mother helped me with time and the persons in my household. Now, of course, as I said, I'm a fun person. So, you know, look at niceness after the night. So we can't just bore in. So we're going to do a nice little activity. Are you ready for the activity? So this activity, you're going to be going into two groups. So our wonderful host will place you into two into two groups or three groups um, based on the grade level, right? So if you're in um, if you're a parent of a child that's in grade three, you would go into that group, grade um, four, grade five, right? So in your groups, you're going to go in, you're going to create a game um, to assist your child in telling time, and you're going to be using um, the materials, the items that I've placed here. So the only three things you're getting to create this game, right? You're going to, you're thinking of four of number cards, one to 12. You're thinking of chalk, you're getting cartridge paper. So you are now going to be creative in your groups and you're going to come up with an activity. You're going to come and explain the activity to everyone else. And then we're going to decide which group has the best game and that group will get a nice little surprise, all right, from Think Educational Services. Are we ready, Shanika? We are definitely ready. So I'm going to open the breakout rooms now. If you wish, you can take a screenshot of the instructions here so that you have that when you go into your room. I'm going to open all breakout rooms. So what you'll need to do, you need to look for grade three, grade four, grade five, and select the grade that your child is in. All right, so let's go. So you'll see something coming up on your screen that will guide you as to which room you could join. All right, so persons are going in their rooms. And for our parents on YouTube, we definitely want to know your activity as well. So you can go ahead with your child at home, create your activity and share a bit of it here in the, in the chat because I definitely want to share what you have done with our parents here on Zoom as well as Miss Cope. She would love to know what game you come up with. Very well. I would really like to see what my parents are coming up with. I know you're creative and I'm excited to see, you know, the games that you come up with.
All right, so we have 17 persons not yet in a room. Okay, so I'm going to... Excuse me, I'm not seeing anything on the screen. I only see, please note that this game must be played outside. I'm not seeing anything. All right, Where, did you just join? No. I'm All right. Um, Shanika, oh. you can also play. Um, but right, that's what I'm game. going to do. So I'm going to ask persons, um, grade three persons to indicate in the chat. So, um, persons indicate in the chat if you're in grade three, four, or five. All right, so I'm not seeing in the chat which group you're in. Which are you in grade three? Just say grade. Oh, you can open your mic one at a time. Eight zero nine two. Which grade are you in? Which grade is your child in? Caroline. Grade five. Karma. All right, eight zero nine two is grade five. Yes. All right, Caroline, what grade? Five. Celia and Omario? Three. Diana Duncan? Diana? Gia Charlton? Beth for Nelson. Gia? Beth for Nelson. All right, remember this is a this is a session for parents. Joan Jackson. Latin Phyllis. Latavia. Grade five. Grade five. Naughty. Oh. Which grade naughty? Paul Allen. Roxanne. Grade five. Paul Allen, grade five. Roxanne. Grade five for Roxanne. Roxanne, grade five. Santana. Grade three. All right. Star Tashana. Grade five, Evan. Miss Sims, please check the waiting room. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, Tiffany is in one of those already. All right. All right. So presenters who are here, if you wish, you can join any of those groups if you wish. Or you can remain here in the main room.
Did they get the time? A time? All right. So we want to end this session, this part of the session by 4.30. So uh, let us see how best we can work up till 4.30. So we have nine more minutes now to finish up our game or the idea of our game. Did you check the waiting room, Miss Sims? Yes, I accepted the persons there. Okay. So I'm actually going in the breakout rooms. I'm checking oh, on. you're able to. Yes, I'm checking on the different groups and they are doing so well. I'm excited to see, you know, the final game. All right. So um, grade four, did you, grade four was there asking for a little help? I'm going. All right. So for the parents that we have on YouTube, what idea of a game can you come up with? So you are going to use the following items to create a game to assist your child in telling the time. All right, so we want the activities are the things that you have are number cards, numbering one to 12, you have chalk, and you also have cartridge paper. So this game must be able to be played outside. And students who are on YouTube, remember to invite your parents on so that they are able to participate in the activities. Yeah, well, you know, all right, right. Your, your mic is not muted. Okay, miss. Okay. Which grade are you in? Would you like to be placed in the room now? Which grade are you? Is your child in? Grade four. Grade four. Let me find your name. Uh, I'm not sure who is talking though. Shelly and Graham, Valika's grandmother. All right, all right. I'll assign you now. Russian, Russian easy grade five, Miss Farmer. Danny. All right, remember to mute your mics. Okay, Miss. Miss, good evening. I'm Stacy and Richards Dante Ricketts, mommy. All right, uh, Stacy on. So, which class, which grade are you to be assigned to? Grade four C. Grade four. Hello. Hello. I think you are muted. Oh, Kellyanne, what group? Um, what what grade is your child in? I am a presenter. Grade four, Miss. Hey, come to the back one it's a minute, please. Jane, Jane. I don't want to treat. Hi, um, I'm Sunny Colarnes, mommy. She's in grade four. Sorry, grade three. Thank 
Miss, Miss, hello, hello. Yes. Hello. So, Camille RV, what grade is your child in? He's in grade five, Patterson. Grade five. What about Duncan, Diana? Which grade? Julianne, which grade? Kamara, which grade? Sanik Lawrence, which grade? Grade three. All right, so Monique Smith. I was asking you, you said we could make a chart. I was asking you to tell us, how could we make that chart? So give us a little bit more information because that's sounding interesting already. Miss Sims, the groups, they seem to be almost ready. So I'm guessing in the, in the next few minutes, um, we can take them out of their rooms to the main session. All right, awesome. So give them about uh, three more minutes? Yes. All right, great. Good evening, Miss. Shireen, Jerome Green, mommy is in grade five. All right, I'm going to send you to grade five. I think they're almost finished. I remember I told you Robin is grade five, five participants. Which one? Grade five. Which one? Which what, what is the name you have on this platform? I'm Camille Harvey, a grade five participant. Camille, I'm not seeing your name here. Let me scroll on a little more. Not seeing your name here. Camille. Kamara? No. I'm not seeing your name here. What is the name that you, you're on with now? My name is Camille Harvey. That's what I'm on with. Start with me. My child name is Robin Harvey. But we're by Patterson. I'm not seeing any of those names here. So check to see what your name is in the meeting. Remember to mute your, your, your microphones. I said in the meeting in the chat, my name is Tammy. Some people are going to break out of grade five. Okay. Right, but I'm not seeing any Camille Harvey here in the list of persons. 
something to me, but hi, Miss. Hello. Yes, I'm here. Yes, I saw it. This is Kamara. Kamara, right? So Kamara, which grade? Five plus two. Grade five. Five plus two. All right. Please mute your mic. All right. Thanks. I just placed you in. Hi, Miss. Hi. So I will be I will be closing the breakout rooms now. Good evening, Derry. Ashton, dial the mommy. All right. So we are closing the breakout rooms now for the Hello? persons to come out. Hello? Hello? Are you not hearing us? Hello? This is pure foolishness. I don't know what else do the right thing and all. Miss, good evening again. Uh, you put me in the class, Miss, and for all the time I'm there, I don't hear a thing they said. All right, so I'm unsure of what is happening in the rooms, but the rooms are closing in the next 28 seconds because persons who have been there from the beginning, they would have started their discussion on the activity. So I'm not sure as to what is happening in that particular breakout room because I have to really be here to see what is happening. So... We're going to come back now in the main room and we're going to share what each person would have, which group would have come up with. Hello? Hello? All right, Miss Copes, are you back? I am here. They all right. Here. So I closed all the rooms, but the persons are still, are they back out yet? I think they are. Yes, they are. All right. So grade three, can I have a representative from grade three to just um, walk us through the activity that they created? Grade three? Yes, miss. Yes, miss. All right. So can you can you walk us through the activity you created with the three with the three items? So my name is Tashana from grade three. And we're going to use two cartridge paper, one to make an analog an analog clock and one to make some not some cards we tell it with time so we're going to place like an iron seat outside on the analog clock i'm going to use the number cards to to, to make time one to twelve and we're going to play iron seat outside um where does the chalk come in we what are we using the chalk for remember we have to use all the items Hi, i um, Yolan Ward, Diane. I'll be explaining. I'm from grade three also, and I'll be explaining how the chalk is used. Mm -hmm. So the chalk will be used by each child that has found a piece of the cards that were hidden in the yard. Mm -hmm. The child will use the chalk to draw the hands on the analog clock to show or to represent what is on the card that they have found. So say, for instance, if they found a card that says one o'clock, then they'll be using the chalk to draw the hands on the clock to represent one o'clock. Beautiful. I really love this game. Grade three, you did awesome. I, I like how you incorporated all the items that are on the list. And I really like the way you, you explained it. Beautiful. Good job, grade three. Grade four, remember it's a competition in a people. So something nice now, because I really love... Um, Grade three, the competition is stiff. Grade four, let me hear what you have. Hi, um, good afternoon. I'm a parent from Crescent Primary School. So for the clock, we'd be using the chalk to draw the clock outside and uh, labeling it um, with the hours, one from 12 to, yeah, you know the hours or, or on the clock, analog clock looks. 
With the cartridge paper, we've been making the hands of the clock. And with the number cards, the number cards are already labeled one to 12. So you're going to use those like flash cards. So you would hold it up to show the time on there and the child would move the hands of the clock to represent the time you held up. Um, also, if you have like more than one child, like two children, what you can do is to make it more fun, make it kind of similar to Twister where they actually use their body. So one child represents the, the, hour, uh, the hour hand one, the other child represents the minute hand. So when you show them the time, they can actually arrange themselves to, um, to tell the time on the clock. Beautiful. I really like this one. I like the way that they are using their bodies. I think that part really caught my attention. Um, really good game. And it really brings out telling the time, you know. So thank you, grade four. I'm really good. Real proud of you. Grade five. Let me see what you come up with. Because grade five, come up with something extra special with bodies moving and all of these excitement. So grade five, let me see what you're coming up with. And what you've come up with. Sorry about that. Yes, Carolyn. Pleasant afternoon. I'm Carolyn representing grade five. So first we will use all three items that is listed. We will use a chart for outline and upscotch on the ground. Then we would use a cartridge paper, which we will draw 12 different clocks and they will have the minute and the hour and some will be on the past like three past, uh, 20 minutes past three, past one, past two, and some is showing two. So the children will know how to read when it is showing past and when it is showing two, the hour. And um, all the students in grade five will jump into the art cup by throwing um, a stone in the first one. They will jump and they will go into that box, which the clock, that we cut out of the cartridge paper, will be placed in each box, numbering from different numbers, one to 12, telling the different time, past and two, so that each time they jump in the box, they will tell you what time it is showing. And if it is wrong, they would have to come back out and start all over. So each student will get a turn to go in the box at all times. If they reach the last one and they get it wrong, they have to come back out and start over. So it is just a way of letting them practice, practice, practice to perfect it so that they you know, know the time. And um, that is our presentation. Not in the full excitement door of grade five. So I really, really love this. I really like the, the activity part where they get to jump. Because a lot of times they're inside and they're not getting the exercise. So even apart, separate and apart from learning the time, they're also getting fit. I like that palm um, grade five. So what you're going to do in order for us to know who has won, the group that has won, what we will do is that in the chat, parents, you're going to select, and I'm going to ask um, Shanika to help me to see which, which grade has gotten the most votes. You're going to take your go to the chat, and in the chat, you will say whether it's grade three, four, or five. So it's open now. Let's get voting so we can know which grade has won the prize. All right. Thank you so much, Miss Cobes. Okay. I tell you, these parents are very creative. I definitely enjoy the idea of games that they are talking about here. And I know that some teachers who are online would have benefited greatly from some of what the teacher, the parents have said. All right. So while they vote in the chat for the best grade, we're going to move on to our next presenter. So presenter two has been an educator for over 16 years. Please mute your mics. Presenter 2 has been an educator for over 16 years as a classroom teacher and a mathematics coach in the Ministry of Education. She is mother to three wonderful boys. She enjoys educating and creating ripples that will effect changes for thousands of generations. By way of virtual clubs, please help me to welcome Mrs. Kellyanne Richards. She will be presenting on the concept of money. 
So, Sis Richards. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. Okay. You can present in the meantime. My task here is to help you guys to understand how you can help your children in successfully understand money. And I know that money is a big issue where children are concerned because many of us, our children really don't understand the foundation of money. Um, they don't understand the one sense because they really don't see that one sense to understand it. And hence when they are asked to solve problem using money, um, it is a really serious problem. So today we are going to um, be talking about how we can really help our children to master the concept of money. So um, your child and money, and of course, at the end of this session, you will be able to explain to your child or your children how, how many cents are in a dollar and what is the purpose of learning about money and how does money work in real life. Let's get to our activity. And this activity is for the parents and I would like the parents to help me break this um, icebreaker, um, just to see how best you guys um, understand the concept of money too. So I'm going to, there, there is um, an activity on the screen, or I think wherever you are, you will see the activity. And I'm going to ask you to attempt the activity and share with me and the others um, how exactly you go about um, solving the problem. Shanika? Would you like me to read it for you? Sure. All right. So Adrian was given some money as shown below. He spent 40 hundredths of a dollar on book, nine and three hundredths on snacks, and $15.75 on a play toy. How much money was spent on book, snacks, and all three items. Right, and they can also place their answers in the chat, as well as we could get um, maybe about three feedback from anyone who willing to share. I will give you about um, five minutes to work through the problem, and then we will talk about the problem. All right, great. Okay, Shanita. All right. In the meantime, I'm seeing where I'm seeing where um someone on YouTube is saying that they help with sorting out the money sometimes. Right. And they also said that uh they help with their father's business and um they cash items. So this person clearly has been doing a lot of things with excellent money. job. Very right. good. Very good. Just to backtrack a little. Um, when Miss Copes asks persons to vote for the grades, here on YouTube, I'm seeing several votes. So we will have to go through this as well so we can select the winning grade. So we have several here for grade five. We have some for grade four. I'm seeing a lot for grade five, but we will go through this. So at the end, we can select the winning person. And I will be sending out a form at the end so you can put your information there while you leave feedback so that from there we'll be able to contact you in regards to the winning group. And just to let the parents know that you don't have to be afraid in sharing, discussing, that's what we are here for. And to, you know, to really assist you as you assist your child or children. So you can time them, um, Shanika. When the five minutes up, you can let me know. Yes, man, I'm looking at it. So they have about three more minutes remaining. Okay. I'm 
All right, so re remember to mute your mics. All right, so Brizan Campbell on YouTube is saying that they're always counting money. Like what, when are you counting money, Brizan? Are you seeing the question on the board as well? So I think these are comments from, from children, from some students. What about the parents here on YouTube? If you are there, can you give us a response to the item we have on the board? Can you share anything? What does 40 undress of a dollar means? Those are critical questions that you need to ask yourself before, you know, trying to solve the problem. What does nine and three undress means? All right, I'm seeing someone commenting 40 cents on YouTube. So what do you mean, Kelisha Morris Adams, when you say 40 cents? What are you responding to? Kelisha also said $9.03. Tia Tia Book says 40 cents. Camille says it's three quarters of 100, I think. Nadia Powell says book is 40 cents. Snack is $9.03. Play toy is $15.75. And the total is $25.18. Well, I see some persons really, and I must say, um, those who are thinking through the problem, excellent, excellent, excellent. And I'm seeing um, Roxanne saying $35.18. So we will, we will go through that too. I right, tell me when the five minutes is up, Sean. All right, so we are ready for them now. Okay. So we are going to go through our problem. So Adrian was given some money as shown below. He spent 40 cents, which is 40 undress. So we are, how many cents are in a dollar? I need someone to answer that. How many cents make a dollar? So tell me when they answer, Sean. All right. So here on YouTube, because I'm unable to see the chat there. Okay. So, right. But here on YouTube, I'm seeing Kalisha Morris Adams saying that $1 is equal to 100 cents. And then she went further to say that 40 hundredths of a dollar is 40 cents. So I'm seeing in the chat that um, some person says 100 cents, right? I'm seeing some person say 199 cents. Um, but most persons saying it values 100 cents, that means there is 100 cents in a dollar, and children must be taught that. Before we can teach our children about money, they must be taught how many cents are in a dollar. We cannot, I know they don't see the cents, they only see the dollar, they only see the five dollar, they only see the twenty dollar but they really don't see the one cent. And that is what is really causing the mess up because they can't see the one cent, but they must be taught that there are 100 one cents in a dollar. So 40 hundred would be 40 out of 100 cents, which means it's 40 cents. So on book, we spend 40 cents. Now I want somebody to tell us, how do we write 40 cents as a decimal? So Shanika, you can tell me what they say. I'm not able to see all of them. All right. How do we write 40 cents as a decimal? All right. Mrs. Erskine, you can check the chat as well. Well, I'm seeing some person say 0 0.40 in the chat. Um, I'm seeing some person say 0 0.40, which is the same as 0 0.40. 
-hmm. All right, excellent. Now, parents, these are very critical things when it comes on to teaching our children about money. They must be able to know that it's 100 cents make a dollar. And if you're writing 40 cents, they must understand how that 40 cents is written. Now, on book, they, they spend, Adrian spend nine and three on dress, on, on the snap, on the snap. How much money did he actually spend? And I actually um, see some person said that they spend nine dollars and three cents. Children have a problem with this. They don't know three out of one or three out of a hundred, which is three cents, which is 0 0.03. They always mix up three cents and 30 cents. So we have to be very clear when we say three cents and when we say 30 cents. We have to let the children write that. Now, on snap, on, play, on the play toy, that was very clear. He spent $15.75. So in total, he spent $25.18. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Right. And 18 cents in total. Right. And I'm seeing where Emika Sterling, I've calculated that here on YouTube. I'm seeing Child of the King and Marie Mac. Kenzie, I'm seeing a lot of persons here. Demar, Thomas, Shanae, Barracks, they're calculating that same thing. So they're on track with you. Right. So some persons, I, I think I see you have $25.30. Um, go, go and um, please check over that for me. You should have 0 0.40, which is, um, that would be the, the book. And then you should have nine and three cents, which is 9.03 on snacks. And then on play toy, you should have $15.75 and add the total to get all three items. Now, parents, these are some of um, the things that our students are given in class to do, and it poses a great challenge for them. So, I want you to take note of that as you help your student, your, your, your children or child to master the concept of money. We're moving on, Sean. You can go to the other. Okay, you're working it out for them. Go ahead. I was just, I, I was just um, arranging them so that they can do their calculations for the ones right. who did not come up with the answer. Okay, so right. here, on the, here on the screen, you will see the working out. All right, thank you, Sean. You can go to the other slide. Now, where do we start in teaching our children about money? And as I said, children should be taught how many one cents are in a dollar. We cannot teach our children anything else before teaching them this. And I, I'm keep, I keep emphasizing it because I want parents to know that our students really don't understand the one cents. Also, how many 10 cents are there in the same dollar? Now, I want the parents to tell me how many 10 cents, and I'm saying this because we, sometimes we take it for granted, but sometimes many persons really don't understand how many 10 cents make a dollar. So parents, I, you can give us some feedback, Sean, as to how many 10 cents. Okay, excellent, 10. ten. Excellent. So the children, too, need to understand that there are 10, 10 cents make a dollar. If they were given 5, 20 cents, how much money that would be? If they were given 5, 20 cents, how much money that would be? One dollar. Excellent, wonder. Mm -hmm. So all these are the same as a dollar. Now children need to know how to break up money. The same money, if you get $20, tell me all the ways you can, you can get $20. The children need to understand that. And don't take it for granted, parents, that I have worked with children, as I said, over the past years of being a teacher. And sometimes you ask them these questions, and it is amazing that 
children really don't understand like how many 20 cents equal to a dollar or tell me all the ways can you break up $20 to get back $20. If you say you have $5, how, many, how much more do you need to make $20? Sometimes they don't know. We can have that dialogue with them. And it is not a long dialogue while you are cooking. Anything you are doing, you can just quiz them on it to see how much they know about their money. Which national era is found on each dollar and cent? Now, this is another um, interesting one because even us as adults, sometimes we don't know which national era is on which money. We are using the money, but we don't really pay attention to who is on the money. Now, that is a very good marker for, student, for um, children to understand, where they understand which national era is on the $20. They are better able to, to talk about the $20. So help them to pay attention to that. Also, this is a topic that they also get in social studies, not only math, but it also helps with their social studies. So while you're helping them with math, they are also helping them in other areas. All right, so ways of helping them while you are washing, while you are cleaning, while you are cooking, are doing whatever chores, just walking with them because, to be honest, children really don't like to sit and do work. But if you have a fun time with them, just you and them walking, you're just talking to them, you find out that you will help them more than just giving them a work. So go take your book. As for me, my personal experience with my children, I really tell them to take book. What I do with them, I'll be cooking and I'll be asking them some question pertaining to either money clock and a fraction. That's how I get them to be engaged. While I tell them to take the book, sometimes they will cry because they feel as though they are in a school setting. But you don't have to place them in a school setting. You can be Playing a game, I, I heard um, some parents coming up with creative ways of teaching the students about clock. So instead of making it like they are in school, you just find creative ways of helping them to understand about what they need to understand. And this will be very meaningful to them, right? They want to know that you as a parent are engaging them as well as we as a teacher who are engaging them. So when you know and engage them, they are better able to understand what they are doing. You can move on, Sean, if there's any, right. Now, these are some of the activities that you can help them. These are some activities that you can use with them, right? Peter was given $20. He used 0.78 cents to buy a few sweets. He also used five and 19 hundredths to buy a drink. How much money did he use in total? Now, these are some of the activities that you can engage your, your, your um, child with. You can take a picture of the activities and you can come up with, because I know as parents too, you have your own creative way of teaching your child about money. So. These are just suggestions that we would know what the child um, should know, but you also know what you would like to instill in your child. Now, how much money is 500 of a dollar? All these things the children should know when I say 500 of a dollar, that is five cents, five cents out of 100 cents. So if I have 500 of a dollar, I have 5 cents. You can also ask the child, how much more money do you need to make a dollar? Then you will find out if the child is really thinking along that path. You could also ask the child, how much money is 50 hundredth of a dollar? You could ask 50 hundredth of a dollar. Um... Let me get a feedback. 50 hundred of a dollar is how much, parents. I see some persons saying 0 0.50, which is 50 cents. Excellent, excellent candies. 
right? Shani I'm Peggy Curtis Curtis over here. Yes, man. I see Sanjean Montique saying 50. And I'm just seeing 50. And I want to implore that we right. put our unit on. I'm right. seeing um, Alan also saying 50 and a few others. But I want you to put your units on. And this is very important, parents. Whenever you are asking your child, you notice I said, how much money is 50 hundred of a dollar? Now, very important, you should insist that your child give you the unit. Because when you say 50, it could be $50, right? Which we know that the child is really saying 50 cents. But if the exam that they go to take and they say 50, and they don't write the unit, Beside it, they are going to get it wrong. So whatever question you're asking your child, ensure that their child is giving you the unit beside what you're asking. And I'm so proud of the parents who are really, you know, blasting up the chat with the 50 cents. Excellent. I know, I know, right, Mrs. Excellent. Richard. Over yeah. here, I have so many parents, um, you know, and they're having their 50 cents. Well, some is just saying 50, you have plenty of them saying 50 saying cents, 50 cents. right and Excellent. we also have some children some students over here telling us how their mother is helping them at home with the different things so they're saying that whenever the, the, the mommy wants to know certain things they call them and ask them to tell them to calculate things for them and also to tell them the time so some of our parents are definitely working with the children at and, home. and and sometimes parents what you can do to when you ask the children um, questions, pretend as if you don't know the answer. Or uh, sometimes you may ask them something and you say, you sure you know the answer? That's the answer. Because you want, that, you, you want them to be confident when they, are, when they are responding to your questions. So you just don't want them just to give your answer, but to be sure about what they are doing. What would be the total of three ten dollars Five, one dollars, three hundred dollars, and four hundred cents. Now, this is another one that when I ask children these things, they cannot combine money to give their total. So I'm going to ask the parents, one parent to tell me how much money would that be? Three hundred dollars. All right, the five one dollars and that nine three three. All right, so I'm seeing where you say 339. Excellent. You have any, Sean? Yes, I do. I see Novelette McDermott saying $339. She has her dollar sign on. I'm right. seeing Sanjin Montique, 339, but there's no dollar sign. So I don't know if you're talking about gungo peas or mangoes. I don't <laughs> really know. But um, I have, um, right, I have Kathy Simpson as well and Marie McKenzie, and they're saying $339. Okay, um, let me get back to my screen. I think I've lost. Hold on. All right, very good. Now, excellent. So we should always have our unit. And if you get 339, you are perfectly correct. If Amir has 0 0.90 cents, and which of the... Ch uh, if Amir has 0 0.90 cents and Kelly has 0 0.09 cents, which of the children has more money? This is an argument that we can stimulate with our children to, to let them, uh, to, to see if they understand what's the difference between 0 0.9 cents, 0 0.90 cents, and 0 0.09 cents. Who has more? And we I have, have answers. Roxanne mm -hmm. saying, um, Hamir, um, let me go to my chat and see. Let her go to chat and see if I can. Let her go to chat and see if I can. I'm seeing Yannick. Uh, I'm yes, seeing. 
Yeah. All right, uh, one minute there. Uh, Excuse me, one sorry, minute. Um, there's, one there's, somebody there. there's, there's somebody who needs to mute their mic. The echoing, the echoing is coming back on. So you need to mute the your echo, mic or turn off, turn down your off. other so device. You Somebody else. Yeah, somebody else. My somebody right. Else. So someone in the meeting. So someone in the meeting. Sorry, um, Kelly, I'm please unmute. I'm trying to mute the person. Sorry. Okay. All right. Right. So most persons saying Amir, which is very good. Amir would have um um the 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 most money, um, which is 90 cents. You can go to the other side, Sean. Right. A lot of persons here on YouTube as well saying that Amir has. So they are definitely agreeing with us over here. All right. So what is the purpose of learning money? So teaching money skill is important because students need to understand the value of money. How it how you can create the same amount of money using different coins and bills. So if you give them $300 for their lunch money, they should be able to tell you all the ways that they could change up that $300 to still get. So what I would do with my children, if I give them three $100 today, the next day I'm not give the, giving them the same three $100. I'm giving them like $250 a $100 and maybe $5, $20 so that they understand that the same combination will give you the same result. This combination will give you the same result. So you may, the, you may have different com combination of money, but you will still have $300. And this will help the, the students to overcome the, the, the fear of money and not understanding money. This helps them to prepare for the real world and comprehend how much things cost and how much how to make change. Because the truth is, I've seen children, when I was in the classroom, they buy like, you know, the bun that they usually sell for 20, for, I think it's $2. And they would give you this money like $100. And when you ask, how much change should you get back? They really don't know. Children buy a pencil at the gate from the vendor and they walk away leaving their change, especially the smaller children. They walk away leaving their change. And sometimes they don't know how the money is spent. I always ensure when I give my children money, if you lost the money, you must tell me you lost the money. But you must account for the money I give you every day. So the first thing that they come in and they say, good evening, I would say, tell me, how do you spend your money today? Right? And I will go through the list with them. And if they cannot account for the money, there's a, I would say to them, okay, I don't think you have done well today with the money. Right, because you cannot account for two dollars or five dollars or ten dollars, you must give an account for the money. If you buy 10 sweetie, you must tell me about the 10 sweetie, and we're calculating it so they understand their change what money am I giving and what money I should receive. And this is very important as children advance into the, the wider society. Other reason, it helps to bring the math curriculum to life. They can apply their skills to real world um, problem and activities. Word problems are necessary in maths and money word problem are a great way to incorporate multi-step word problems. This also support the reading curriculum because students must read closely to accurately identify the information they need to correctly solve the problem. So it's not just working with figures, but the student must be given worded problem to work with. All right. So these are some real world situation that we can deal with. Four girls have $5 to share equally. 
how much money will each girl get? And you ask your children to explain these things. Mary has the amount, this amount of money as shown. You need to, you, um, she buys two bottles of water that each costs $154.20 and a slice of cheese for $42.98. How much money does she have left? Now, these are activities that you can share with your children as you teach them. You can go over, Shanika. This is the last activity um, that you can share. Mark has $389.01, which is one cent, to buy supplies for his art project. He wants some water paints that values $190.12. Does Mark have enough money to buy three of the water paints? And you ask your child to explain if that money would be enough to buy the water um, paint. Um, this is the ending of my session. And it was a great pleasure working with you parents. I, I hope that I would have given you, you know, not as many as I would like, like in this short session, but I hope you would have learned something that you can take away in helping your child. Thank you. And thank you so much, Mrs. Richards. Thank you so much. That, that was you a whole welcome. mouthful. It was a whole leap and we, would, we must have learned a lot of things. Before I go over to our third presenter, there is something I want to point out. So on YouTube, I'm seeing some persons writing their dollars like this. And I'm just going to go ahead and write an example. So they have three, three, nine, and their dollar sign following. Is there anything that you could say to them about this, Mrs. Richards, before you go? All right, sure. Our dollar sign is, is not placed behind the one, the, one, the one place because the nine is in the one's place. It's always placed in front of the, the number that you are trying to, to write. So the, the child must, or the parents must have the dollar sign in front of the, 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 the number you are trying to write. So that is an incorrect way of writing it. And I see Miss Sims writing the correct way on the, the board, right? So it is $339. And this is all we write it. This, will, this is the correct way of writing $339. Your dollar sign must always be on your left hand side. So let's use our hands on our left hand side and not our right hand side. Okay, all parents? Right. Yeah. All right. Thank and you I so must much say, for that. I, um, parents who are saying thank you, Mrs. Richards. It was really a pleasure working with all of you, and uh, you are welcome. All okay? right. Bye. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So now we will have our third presenter. So presenting on measuring skills is a pre-trained teacher who has been preaching trained for over five years at Miracle Preparatory. So she has been teaching there for five years at and she is a trained teacher now for over eight years as she works in the public sector. She's happily married for 19 years with one daughter. She was born and grown in St. Catherine. She attended Monique Teachers College and the University of the West Indies, where she would have attained her certification. Colleagues, parents, all the persons here, please help me to welcome Mrs. Xanthia Jarman with a virtual clap. <laughs> Thank you so much, Liz. Thank you so much, parents. Good evening. Good afternoon, parents. It's okay to say hello. Let me good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right. So as Miss Sims just said, I will be looking at measurement skills, looking at enhancing the measurement skills of your children. So I'll be sharing 
my screen please let me know if you are seeing my screen are you seeing my we screen are. awesome are. so my topic today is measurement and i will be asking you some questions as we go along feel free to raise your hand in the chat to respond or to type in the chat so let me bring up the chat so i can see as well So our first question this afternoon, what is measurement, huh? What do you think measurement is, parents? When you hear the word measurement, what do you think of? What comes to your mind? Light it up in the chat for me. Let me see some responses coming up in the chat. None yet. Not what comes to your mind? What do you think about when you think about measurement? Comes from the root word measure. What are some things that you measure? Or oh, some weighing an item. Very good. To know the length of something. Beautiful. Any other? So is measurement only weighing? Is it only knowing the length of something? Anything else that we can measure? The width or sum? Anything else we can measure? I see on YouTube they're saying to know the perimeter of something. something awesome. Weighs. Lovely responses. So they I are measure. coming up. Be right. so lovely. Size. Awesome parents. Well done. So you know what you need to go ahead. All right. Thank you so much. So this is my response. Anything we use a process to find out the size, length, or amount of something we are measuring. So this means we can put an object on a scale to determine its weight in grams or use a ruler to measure an object's length in meters. But it can also mean counting to get the total number of items in a set. Or using base 10 blocks to decide a stick is 10 blocks long. All right. And this is according to Michelle Hurst and Susan Levine. It's a blog by both writers. Why is so we know measurement is weighing something, finding the length of something, counting, even telling the time like our presenter just now. But why is measurement important? Let me see you light up the chat again, parents. Why is measurement important? Do you think it is important? Talk to me. Why do you think measurement is important? Accurate. I love that. Accuracy. Beautiful response. Thank you, KGP. Anyone else? Any other reason? Any responses from YouTube over there, sis? I'm still waiting. It's a little delayed. Okay. So, okay. I'm okay. seeing where someone is saying measurement is a number that describes the size or amount of something. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. You are all right there. You are all correct. All your responses are right on target. But why is it important? Why is measurement important? I see one person saying accuracy. All right. One person says you don't go over the amount you want. Beautiful. I am loving these responses. Yes. Help to form a size, distance. But when you say distance, what really are you saying? I'm not quite sure. What really are you saying when you just say distance? You have to explain. Tell me. Not coming up yet? I'm seeing a lot, a lot more responses over here, Zanthia. I'm seeing where persons are saying it's important. Um, you have to measure length. And some person said to find the mass of something. I'm seeing where other person saying to know the length or size or wideness of an object. Thank you. Right. Awesome. I'm awesome. Seeing a lot awesome. Of those awesome responses. Let us take a look at some of the responses I have here. Tell me more. So, what does measurement really do? It helps us to make fair decisions 
and to provide a standard unit of measurement for all. So the most important one is really to provide a standard unit of measurement. Can you imagine going to the market to sell a cane from your farm produce? And the buyer decides to use his large feet as measurement. But you want to use your small feet to measure the cane, to know how much to pay for the cane. So let's say one joint of the cane is for a dollar, like Miss was just saying. Let us use our money now from our previous session. One joint of the cane is for one dollar. And the buyer wants to use his feet, his large feet to measure the cane, but you don't want that. You want to use your small feet to measure the cane. Do you think the sale would be fair? Why or why not? Let me see the responses in the chat. Come on, do you think the sale would be fair? The buyer wants to use his feet to measure the cane. So his feet will tell how many joints. So if, if his feet, if the length of the cane is about three lengths of his feet, then one, one, one length of his foot would be $1. So three lengths would be for $3. Now imagine using your small feet to measure one of your small foot. One of your small feet is for a dollar. Who would pay more? Who would, hmm? Who would need to pay more? Who would lose rather? Would the buyer lose or would you lose? Hmm? Talk to me, not fair, because it's a different unit of measurement, all right? Because it's not the buyer is selling, okay? The buyer would lose. Why would the buyer lose and the buyer's feet is bigger? The buyer's feet are bigger than yours. Why would the buyer lose? No, it's not accurate. Let me see those responses coming out. Why do you say it is not accurate? In a performance task, you would have to provide more explanation. So parents, in providing these explanations, you would have to get the students to understand that everything you write, you need to explain. Explain, explain. So we just can't write, no, it's not accurate and stop there. We have to say, why? Why is it not accurate? Provide some form of evidence or some form of fact to substantiate your information you want to prove yes sis i see wendy green saying because his feet is bigger i'm also seeing christine osborne saying um you would pay more because his feet is smaller than the seller mm -hmm. <laughs> so the persons you're talking about the size of the feet exactly right? so so now you see why it is very important for us to have a standard unit of measurement for all why is measurement important you want your decisions to be fair you want to use a standard unit so if you go to linstead to sell cane the same thing that is used to measure it in linstead and you go to spanish town it will be the same thing so there is a standard unit and that is why we have our rulers we have our scales and that is why they give us the gram they give us the liter they give us the meter and these are the units that they have given us to use the metric system we are trying now to move away from the pound and so when you go to the shop parents or the supermarket, you will notice that on each bag now, you are seeing instead of pounds, you are seeing grams. On the liquid, instead of seeing quart, you are now seeing liter. So we are moving onwards into using the metric system. So to get our, our children familiarized with this system, we need to have them using it. Why is measurement important? People need to measure things throughout their lives. They need to measure weight, time, length, and many other measurable dimensions. Now, 
how can you help your child develop his or her mathematical understanding of measurement? And that's where I come in. But before I give you some, would you like to tell me how you have been trying? Anyone, what have you been doing to help your child develop his or her mathematical understanding of measurement? Anyone? I'm still seeing responses in relation to the big foot and the little foot. We have moved on from there now. Does anyone want to tell me how they have been trying to help with measurement? How have you been helping your child? Have you been using measurement with your child or children? No, no one on YouTube says? Not as yet. Not as yet. Probably the internet. Okay, awesome. Using the ruler, using the medicine stick. All right, so I see some things coming up. All right, now parents, I notice when you write, you just write, use ruler. Now, remember I said just now, when you write, you need to explain. Let's say when the students get this performance task and they are given such a question, and this question is graded out of five. Now, you have only listed use ruler or medicine stick. Now, can you imagine how many marks you would, have, you, you would have lost because you have not explained? For just listing, they would have probably given you one mark out of five. You don't want that. You want your child to maximize his best. You want him, to, him or her to get the best result possible. So in your response, explain, model it so that when your child writes, your child will model the same behavior. Good. I help you to use a tape measure. Lovely. You could also add by saying what you helped him, what you helped him to use the tape measure to measure. What did you use the tape measure to measure? You could add that. I help him to use a tape measure to do to measure so and so or to find the length of so and so. Use a ruler to measure, but to, to measure what? So in writing, you must be specific because there are so many things, as I said before, that we can measure. So you need to be specific because what I, if I, the markup is thinking that you're saying I use a ruler to measure the time? So what I'm saying? So you have to be specific. Yes, miss, you were saying something? Right. Sorry about that. I was trying to get in in your pauses. So I see Kathy Simpson saying that she lets her daughter measure and then do the actual measurement. Awesome. And, right. And I see Dana Powell saying like when you're teaching them to cook, you know, you would take out some measuring cups and oh, to O'Connor saying measuring rice with a measuring cup to cook. Mm -hmm. um, Noblet McDermott is saying the same thing. I allow him to use a measuring cup. And I'm seeing, all right. All right. So I, I am seeing the sentences coming out now. Beautiful parents, beautiful. So you are gathering an understanding of how your children should be responding on the performance task. Because it's really a bulk of reading. It's a lot of reading and they expect a lot of writing from the students. That's what the performance task is all about. <laughs> All right, so here are some responses I have for you. Now, by using the language of measurement and looking for everyday ways to talk about units and measurement, you can help support your child to develop mathematical understanding. So when you go to the supermarket or when you are sending your child to the supermarket or to the shop, instead of saying buy two pounds of rice, say to your child, Go get me two grams or go get me three grams or use the terms that are being used. Use the terms that are coming on the different items. You're sending your child to the shop to get you some oil. Go get me a liter of oil. Go get me two liters of oil. Go buy me a, a liter Pepsi. Use up the measurement unit. Use up those units. When 
you when you talk with your children and sure to use the units like our first presenter said you notice when you write your answer the dollar sign was missing so we have no idea what unit you are representing so if it's gram you need to say two gram otherwise i'm going to think you're saying two liters see the importance of ensuring that the units are taken care of use them use them ask your child to help you measure things in the home like windows or tiles compare them help your child use a string or even their own body like arm lengths to measure the objects and compare them have your child measure the same object with different units when they measure an object with millimeters then centimeters then meters they'll get different measurements so you have a book at home or even the table that you have at home get your ruler look on the ruler there are different units on the ruler now you have a ruler which is i think 12 centimeters long 30 is it 30 30 or, or 12 there about the 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 meter rule is 100 centimeters long Are so you what you can do yes miss i was just trying to think two is 30 centimeters <laughs> yes yes so they they you can have them using the ruler on the ruler you will find centimeters and you will find millimeters so what you do is have them use the mill and you need to show them show them look for those letters those unit letters on the ruler you will see mm for millimeters and you will see cm for centimeters now children often do not know how to use the ruler they often turn the ruler anyway to use it now they need to know which unit of measurement it is that is required of them if they are asked for their answers in centimeters and they are measuring then they need to use the part on the ruler that states centimeters right so what you can do is use the millimeters let them measure the book to see how many millimeters it would be use the centimeters on the ruler to see how many centimeters it would be use the meter rule also to measure well, the meter rule to see if it would reach a meter because on the meter rule, once you have covered a hundred centimeters, you would have gone a meter. They would be able to tell you that this book does not reach a meter. Therefore, you would not use meter to measure books, right? And you would use centimeters and you say, but this book is so big, a lot more than millimeters. You would have gone more than 10 or so centimeters so that you could use a centimeter unit to measure your books so experiment with your children let them measure let them compare ask him or her to explain why the measurements are different and what happens when he or she measures using a bigger unit versus a smaller unit go back to the the buyer with the cane you are using your big he's using his big feet to measure and you want to use your small feet think about it would the measurements be standard would it be fair right think about what happens when a bigger unit is used versus a smaller unit. In this case, if you're using a standard unit, because the feet are not standard, but when you look at the centimeters and the milliliters, they are standard. Why? 10 millimeters would give you one centimeters. Likewise, as you count along, you will get a different unit moving up all the way to meters, then to kilometers. As you go along, you will be able to say 10 of this give you one of this or 100 of this give you one of this. So you will know. But this cannot be done using the feet, don't it? Not at all. So we have to use standard units. Have your child use the ruler in different ways. For example, ask your child to measure something that's not lined up with the units of the ruler 
or turn the ruler so the object is lined up with the units and count down so you want your child to experiment using the ruler right so have your child use it i am sure they will get a different measurement go experiment with it and see what happens when they don't start with zero or when they do not align the ruler the units on the ruler to whatever it is they are measuring this helps children think about the purpose of the ruler for showing units and not just for looking at the number where the object ends, right? So they need to understand the units that are on the ruler. Why would they use millimeter to measure things, to measure some things over the centimeter? Why would they use the centimeter to measure some things rather than the meter rule? So when you go and you measure your curtains, why wouldn't you want to use a ruler to measure the length of your curtains? If you're measuring your door, why wouldn't you want to use the millimeters on your ruler to measure the door it will take you forever can you imagine but using a meter rule which is longer you will finish quicker not sure we would want to make our task easier and faster and also measurable in accurate conditions explore with your child Measure everything around you, the tiles, the doors, windows, curtains, etc. Allow your child to engage with online measuring tools. And so we are going to expose you to one this afternoon. Download online games that require some form of measurement. There's a lot of games. What I notice is that our children are technology savvy. Give them the device and they are locked. They just sit and they, they are like this. And they're not moving and that's them with the device they go outside they're inside so you know that they love the technology you can download online games that require some form of measurement you can use online tools interacting tools that will help them to improve and develop their measuring skills so here i have some online games and tools. These are some websites. I am going to paste them in the chat so you can copy them. I also, if you lose them, you can always contact your teacher for these websites. All right, these are great tools to use with your children. You can go ahead and copy them from the chat so you have them. And your teacher already has them. So I'll be doing one last activity with you and I will be done. So this one last activity, I'll be posting the link in the chat as well. So everyone can get on it. And so, Miss, you can put it in the YouTube as well. So that those who are on YouTube can be a can be abreast of what is happening with us. Thank you. I'm I'm pasting them. Okay. I think I've pasted all of them. So the one I am going to look at is the one that's called Toy Theater. So let me paste. This is the last one I am pasting in the chat. Toy Theater. And I am going to stop sharing. So, no, I don't have to stop sharing. I can just select on it. So parents, please select on that last one I shared in the chat called toy theater i am going to select on it as well so we are moving together so this is are you still seeing my screen let 
Miss Sims, are you seeing my screen? Still your screen. Sorry about that. Still seeing your screen. Okay, parents, are you seeing as well? Thank you. Yes. Oh, thank you, my darling. All right. So one hour. If you notice, there are there. There's a lot. There's a lot of activities here that your children can experience, can explore. You have the clock that they can use. Miss just went through the clock with you, so I'll not be looking at the clock. You will be looking at the clock on your own. So you can go and explore with it. The one I am going to look at rather is the Area Perimeter Explorer. So everybody, please open this one. Go to the link and open it. I hope you know how to share your screen because I'm going to call on individuals to share screen. Just to show me what you are doing. Are we ready, parents? Parents? No one responding? No one responding. Yes. 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 Okay, okay. So you can respond yes. 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 you are following. All right. So area perimeter explorer. This is a guarantee on the performance task, parents. Area and perimeter is coming. They will be asking your, your children to Find the perimeter or the area of something. They will be asked to design something. I'm guaranteeing you this. It always comes. Are you in? Light up the chat. Let me know if you are in and you are seeing what I am seeing. Miss, I cannot copy the link. All right. All right. Just touch the link. Touch the link in the chat and it will open up to where we are. Touch the one that says... Toy theater, it's the last one I, I shared. Toy theater. Miss Sims, please tell me if I'm going overboard, am I in time? Well, you are, you are going fine. We have a final presenter after you, but we're going, we're going fine with your activity. Thank you, my darling, thanks. Okay, parents, are you ready? Are you? So I'm seeing I cannot copy. Are you Ed, when you touch the link, did it open for you? Okay, I'm seeing yes. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if that's the response, you know. Is that yes, Miss telling me that the link has opened for you? Miss it not opening. Just touch it. Just go to the chat and touch the link. When you touch the link, it should just take you right to the page. Or Mrs. Um, German, maybe you could share the QR code and allow them to use another device um, to go on it. All right. I'm not seeing a QR code. You know what I shared was the link. Click the, the bar at the top there with the toytheater.com. Bar at the top. The URL. Oh, right here. Click on it, you're saying? Yes, click in that spot. But it takes me out. Not right there in the part where you have the URL. Is the URL you want me to share? No, when you click on the URL, you'll see the barcode coming up to the side. Oh, so you want me to... to, to... Oh, when I click on the URL... So you, so you have your yeah. right. So go back on the to... area perimeter. Okay. Go to the oh create code. So you will have to go back um to the area perimeter explorer. Oh, copy it and just paste it in the chat. Would that be okay? You can just click on it and allow them to use another device to turn on the camera, put it in front of it. And it will come up with the... I'm not quite sure what you're saying because I've not done this one before. And when I use the link, it just takes me right there. So turn on, when you say turn on camera, what camera? All right, so go back on the area explorer, the area um, perimeter explorer. All right. Before you do that. So I'm back there. All right, click in the, where the URL is. Click where the URL is. Don't copy it. Just go back over to the right. To the right, okay. Yes, click on that. Click on it, good. 
Then the QR code should come up. I'm not seeing it. I'm only seeing scan QR code right. or download. Oh, so you are seeing it, but we are not seeing it. It's team. All right. right. So right. So you could actually right click though and get it, and then persons right. open it from there. If right click it and I'm not getting them. it. Let me try the download. But but this download don't make any sense. I don't think so. QR code. Hello, Miss. I'm not hearing you. Can I please turn up your your phone for me, please? My phone is loud, hon. Probably. But I'm Bridget, hearing. It might be your yeah. phone, Bridget, because yeah, I'm, I'm hearing your, her mm -hmm. loudly. All right. So let me try posting this one, this link in the chat, and see if it's better. Copy. Chat. Paste. All right. Try that one now, parents. That select that link I just shared. Just now. The person's on YouTube are ready for you with the link as well. Awesome. Thank you, sis. All right, parents, let me know what's happening with you. Tell me what are they saying? Is, is, is it working now? Is this link working? Is it better for you? No, miss it not. No, man, that sounds like something is wrong with your device. No, it should not be. That's a direct link. When you touch it, it should open. For the persons who are not getting on now, they could try later because this yes, recording thank will you. be available you can for try. Just view. Thank you. Just view my screen and you can try later. All right. So in this area perimeter explorer, the children will be able to find area find perimeter easily. So, listen to this. You need to tile your room. So, let me see if I can create a room. Oh, but I don't want to use all of the boxes. Oh, Lord. I'm going to have to do them one by one. Didn't I have a long one there? No, should be green. Sorry. If you are seeing what I'm doing, you can go ahead and fill out. Fill out. I am going to eight across. Have I gone eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight across. And I'm going four down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. And I am going four down. And if you notice, as you go, you don't even have to count. The number comes up and it tells you where I am going. See? Tells you where you are. It tells you the length. It tells you the width. Now, this is my room. And I'm using, I am, I am modeling first before I give you the activity. Good. This is my room, and I don't want the measurements to show, so I can add total, I can add perimeter. So I don't want anything to show. So I have placed some tiles in my room, but I have not tiled all of my room. Right? So I need all of this box represents your room. Good? I need to tile my room. What measurement do you think? And these are my tiles. These little green color, color things. You can use any color you want. You can choose red, yellow, blue, pink, whichever. This is your room. You want to tile your room. What measurement do you think you will need? You already have some of the tiles in your room. You already have some of the tiles in your room. What measurement do you think you will need if you are going to tile your room? Respond in the chat. What do you think you need? Area, all right. That's a bright parent. 
centimeter all right but we don't see centimeter on this one you know so i'm wondering could it be meter two could we use meter two area length someone says length mm -hmm. anything else one bright person says area i want this person to tell me what area is because i have no idea what area is what is area type it in the chat and tell me what is it what do you mean when you say area area or square feet mm -hmm. around width so it's only the width alone. So if I have only the width alone, I can just check the width of the tile and I would be able to know how many tiles. Distance around. Okay. Mm -hmm. Length and width. All right. All right, length. All right, so I'm going to be using some of these responses. So I am going to take out all of these and put I want to take out the length and put them up there. So that represents my length. This one at the top, parents represent my length. Do I only need that? The persons who are saying length. Is it only that that I need to find how many tiles I need to put in my okay? All right. I'm seeing somebody put in and wait. All right, good. So, all right, so I am going to take out my weight now. I'm going to take out my weight. I'm going to put these down here. All right, so look at it now. This is my length, or, I'm, or, let, or let me get rid of these. Get rid of them, get rid of them. Are you sure you want to delete graph? No, 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 I just want to take out, just want to take out. So there is my length, there is my width. So if I know the length of my tile and the width of my tile, will that tell me how many tiles I will need to cover my room? I see someone saying box. All right, I want to see, I want to see you cover your room with the tiles. So I am going to stop screen sharing I am going to stop screen share. Parents, there's a little thing on your screen that says share. All you have to do is touch it and share. I want to see one person sharing. Let me see what you're doing. Cover your room with the tile. I need to know how many tiles would cover your room. Miss Sims, you will have to give them access to share. This. I think it's already there. Let me see. Yes. Touch your screen. You will see the word share at the bottom. All right. Andrean Brady has started screen sharing. Nice. Let me see what you're doing. All right. Go to the go to the, the activity. Nice. Go to the perimeter. Oh, you're sharing me now. Come on, go back to where you were just now, where the, the, the game is, the activity is. Who can? All right, try going back. Try come out of that because what you're sharing is me. Come out of that. All right, try again. Go across, mm -hmm, go across. Nice. Good, stroll down to the 
perimeter. Not finding it. No. Select math. Go back up and touch math. Go back up. Touch math. Touch the blue math. Second grade, third grade. Joytheater.com category. Yours is different. Stroll up. Let us see what's down there. I see why you're not getting. Yours is totally different. Go back up top. It is. Yes. And you, you would realize as well that you're not going to see what she would have done al already. Right. What she'll have to do now, she'll have to start back from scratch. So uh, she would yeah. have to start back from scratch to show you where she's at. Okay. Do you remember where you were before? How you got to it? Teacher tools. Go, yes, go to teacher tools. Oh, she come out. All right. All right. Stroll up now. It should be right here. Good. There you go. All right. You passed it. Stroll up back. Go back up. It's in green. All the way up. It was among the first. I Yes, there it is. The green area perimeter explorer. The one with the right. So this time I'm going to give you a measurement to work with. So your room, the length of your room is eight centimeters by four centimeters. How many tiles would you need to cover your room? Show me how you would work that out. Eight centimeters by four. We are pretending that each box represents one centimeter. Good afternoon, everyone. Sorry to interrupt. Um, Good afternoon. There is going to be another presenter, and it's getting a little bit late. Thank you. I had asked Miss Sims if the time was okay now, and she had confirmed it was good. All right, so let's um let's put it at thank you, parent. Instead of going to four, let's leave it at those two. Eight centimeters times two. Take out all of that. Take out the the last three. All right, my darling. Good. So how many tiles would you have covered there if your room was eight centimeters times two centimeters. How many tiles would that be? Okay, she's typing in the chat. Very good. That's eight times four. That would be 32 centimeters. You can use that. Also, you can do the same thing for a perimeter. The student would just count the size of each box going right around, and they will be able to tell you how much or what is the perimeter. And if you select the numbers that are at the top, the symbols, it will calculate it for you, give you more knowledge of how to go about doing it. All right. Thank you so much, parents. That's it, Miss Sims.
Or else you right. can go ahead and use up the tools and interact with them. All right. Thank you so much, Mrs. Jarman. Thank you so much for exp explaining in detail how we can do measuring skills. We can help our children with measuring skills at home. And so there are some links that were shared with you. Remember, you can explore them with your children at home or in your personal time. I'm going to invite Mrs. Erskine to welcome our final presenter. Right. Hi everyone. Note our final presenter who will be presenting on the concept of fraction. Parents and colleagues, I would like to introduce to you Miss Imogene Cummings. She has been an educator for over 20 years, teaching at the early childhood and primary levels, both in the preparatory and in the primary school. She has been successful in getting students ready for the GSAT and now PEP. Ms. Cummings has numerous scholarships under her belt. She's a mother of two and a grandmother of one. She has a wealth of experience in teaching all subject areas and is very sought after. She is very sought after by parents to tutor and educate their children. She is currently pursuing her master's degree in literacy studies at the University of West Indies, Mona. She comes with not only the qualifications, but also the years of experience. Please help me to welcome with a virtual clap, Miss Cummings. Thank you. You are welcome. Thank you so very much, um, parents and um, Miss, for the present introduction. One of the things that I have learned over the years as an educator is that maths must be taught early in the morning when the children are fresh and when they are alert and ready. So I am not going to be staying long with you because as I am still at work, <laughs> that's how dedicated I am to the task of, you know, uh, educating our nation's children. Now, my, form, uh, my previous presenters have done a wonderful job and I'm hoping, ladies and gentlemen, that you will take these things into consideration when you are teaching your children. We're living in a virtual world now where everything is at your fingertips. So that last present, presentation from Ms. Jarman, I hope I get the word right, was very well accepted by me. And I myself checking out that website because the children love to do that. You know, now, ladies and gentlemen, parents, fractions in everyday life, that, that, that's where I'm going. And, Maybe we don't even realize it, but almost everything that we do, there is some kind of fraction to it. Most of the time when we think of fractions, we think of, yes, the numerator and the denominator are part of a whole, yes. But we have different types of fractions. We have percentages, we have decimals, we have um, ratio, we have probability. These are different types of fractions. But today we're just going to basically look at how do we identify a fraction in the whole and how we can use it. When you're cooking, you're doing fractions. Because when you, um, all right, can anybody on the podium just tell me how, how does cooking and fraction come in? Anybody want to share? I'm not gonna talk alone. Anybody want to share, any student here want to share and tell me how, yes, I'm seeing somebody says, very good, Sharika, measurement. Can I get to about two more responses? Mm -hmm. Anybody yeah. else? Anybody else want to tell me? Yes. Yes, I'm Andrew, but I want to know how, how do we see fraction in, when we are cooking, 
How do we see that? I, I, I'm, I'm going to just jump ahead and give one. Mommy is cooking dinner or daddy is cooking because, yes, God is cooked too. And when they cook, they cook nice. Very good. When, um, yes, I see some, um, some uh, uh, Kamara said, add, when uh, mommy buys the flour, and she's going to make some of the flour, um, some dumplings, huh? she don't use all of the flour unless it's a big family. So we use some of it. We use a portion of it. And sometimes people get their scale and say, you know something, I just want to make this amount of dumplings. So I want this amount of flour. So when you pour out some of the flour out of the bag, that is a kind of fraction. Yes, Candies, like wild, a quarter cup of something, one cup, half cup. Very good. Yes. And how important it is when you're even needing your flour, the dumplings. Because if you're supposed to use half cup of water and you're going to use um, a, a full cup, what is going to happen? Who can tell me what is going to happen? So somebody tell me what is going to happen. It's going to spoil. Very good. It's the, 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 the mixture is going to become watery. All right? So that's one way of fraction. You're baking. You need to know you're going to bake a two-pound cake. You need to know how much flour to use, how much of the different ingredients you have to put in there to make it um, palatable. And that's one way in cooking about fraction. Now, I know, I know the parents have thought about that, but I don't know if the children saw that. So parents, whenever you're cooking, make sure to tell the children, okay, we are doing some fraction. We're not going to cook all of the two pounds of rice. Huh? We're going to put, cook one pound. Huh? So that's half of it. Mm? We're not going to be cooking all of the, the, the pieces, the two pounds of yam or the three pounds of yam. We're going to cut off one and a half pound. And cook that because it's just a few of us. Uh, and when you look in the pot and you say, okay, there are 10 dumplings in the pot. Okay, 10 dumplings in the pot. Five of us, of us here at home. So it means that everybody can get two. Mm? So everybody gets a fraction of the dumpling. You don't get everything. Okay. So And also in measurement, and, and that was previously done a while ago, telling time. Huh? When you know how many hours are in the day and when you take two hours to do something, what fraction of the day did you use, right? Money, we see fraction. Oh, Lord, that's where the, the, that's where the money um, fraction is mostly seen. You go to the shop to buy stuff and you go with $500 and you, they, they, they give you about $50 change. You know how much money you use? Oh, my God. So fraction is a part of a whole. As a matter of fact, I was looking at me say it come from the Latin word, um, which means part of, right? So in um, when we think about fractions around us, um, just give me a minute there, guys. I'm kind of expecting some news. So just give me. All right. So in the meantime, I will continue for Miss Cummings. So she was talking about fractions around us. And here are some applications of fractions in real life. Splitting a bill while eating at a restaurant. Imagine you and your friends go out and you're going to have dinner and you hear that the bill come to say $8,000 and you decided that we're going to split the bill equally, you know. Fractions will come out there because now you have to see how many equal parts we're going to get or what will we get if we split that $8,000 bill in four equal parts for me and my three friends. So Thank that is an Mrs. instant. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so very much, um, Miss, Mrs. Sims, for just jumping in there for me a while ago. All right. So here are some applications, as Miss Sims was saying. You go to the restaurant to buy something for you go, you know, you just go to chill out with your friends. You understand? You don't want everybody to just get up and leave the whole bill on you. You, uh, you want, you can't go to um, these high-end restaurants and the bill come to $10,000. And, you know, we want to share. And you know what ha usually happens, boys and girls, uh, is that the person who eat the most always want to pay the less. Watch out for that person, okay? But any portion of the bill that you pay, that's a fraction you have paid, right? 
following a recipe. And, and especially parents, I want you to take key note of recipes because usually it is in the, um, in the ability. They normally ask questions about recipe in the ability um, question and your children, some of them are moving into grade six. So they should be able to follow a recipe, understand it, know what fraction is go to what and know how many persons should be served, for how many persons should be served, right? Your body mass index to determine whether you're healthy or not. All right, D dividing pizza, bread or cake. These are some of the things which shows fraction around us, okay? Well, as you probably already know, a fraction is a part of a whole, all right? And we have what we call the numerator and the denominator. The numerator is a number at the top. The numerator tells us how many parts we are considered to give in a way. The denominator tells you how many parts the one thing is divided into. So here we have our whole, a circle, and it is divided into four parts. I am going to give somebody one part out of four, and this person is going to get three parts out of four. So sometimes at home, you have a cake, and somebody decides they want to eat more than you do, and it's four, you are five, or you are at home, right? When you cut up that one cake into five, the five is the denominator. How many pieces you give away, will the that's the numerator. And then probably you're going to give away everything or eat off everything, right? And then it, it, um, we have fraction, names are part of a whole. We see we have the pizza, we have the icicle, we have the grid. And sometimes we have fraction, we look at what we call equivalent fraction that are the same value, all right? So what I want you to, to get and this for the children to grasp this concept is um, about how we can name our fraction. The, the bar that divides the one from the four or the numerator from the denominator, it's called the vinculum or the dividing bar. And later on in the curriculum, when you begin to, um, when you begin to convert proper fractions to decimals, then you're going to need to understand what one over four means, what three over four means. How does a quarter become 0 0.25? How does three quarter become 0 0.75? So once the children grasp this concept from now, you they will not forget it. See here, some of the times in my teaching, ladies and gentlemen, I realize that children believe that the fraction, like you have three quarters, is bigger than one. And the only fraction, sorry, that is bigger than one is one that we call the improper fraction or the top heavy fraction or the vulgar fraction. Those are the names. But all proper fraction is less than one because at first you have the one thing and then you divide it into four. So if you buy the bread, if you buy the pizza, if you buy the cake, allow the children to see exactly what you are doing so that they can understand that this is how we get the four pieces. Show them the one hole and show them the piece and they will be able to see that the hole is bigger than the piece. That is one of the misconceptions. Thank you, Andrine. Um, that is one of the misconceptions the children come into the class with because they say, okay, you have the one pizza, you cut it up into four or five pieces. That means so that's it. the fraction part is bigger than the one. So they need to know that. And a good thing to use is a sliced bread. So you can buy a whole loaf and a slice that's similar and you can show them for every slice that is taken out is a part of the whole bread. All right, thank you so very much. You can move on with. Okay, so here we have our halves, right? It's one part out of two, all right? And we have our thirds, one of the three equal parts. So when the children can see that. So don't be afraid to cut up the things, even paper, if you don't want to cut up, you know, your cake or your bulla or the bun or the bread or whatever. Get the paper, cut things in halves, cut things in thirds, cut things in quarters, in fifths, 
so that they can see the, the different parts. So you put them back together. And I like the fact that here we have the thirds I, um, in, in a circle, we have it in a rectangular form, we have it in a triangular form, all right? So when we begin to pull these things apart and put them back together, the children will be able to understand that um, a fraction, when everything is put back together, you will get a whole. So that when you begin to do um, what we call fractions with different denominators, and be able to find the LCM, they can even use paper folding technique to find the LCM, to add or subtract the fraction without hurting up their heads. Okay, um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, so please follow that. Now, like I said, I wasn't going to take long, so I have some quiz here. Mm? Are we ready? Is anybody on the chat ready? Nobody has said anything, you know, I get people Typing in, but I want somebody to talk to me now. Are you ready for your quiz? Hello. All right. So Jack took two fifth and half an hour to complete it. Yes, you're you ready for me now, Andrean? All right. So Jack took two fifth and half an hour to complete his chores. While his sister Anne took two thirds. Who took longer to finish their chores? Now, before you begin, boys and girls, this is some of the questions I ask my children to do. Before you begin, what is the first thing you need to know here? Andrean, you were talking. What is the first thing you need to know? Hello? Anybody? Any, any boy and girl here want to tell me? All right. I see Sharika. Sharika said, our minute make an hour. I, I, I think you want to find out um, how, very good, how many minutes make an hour. That's the first thing you have to find. You can't find a fraction of an hour if you don't know. All right? Good. That, that's very good. I love that. So, the first thing you need to find out is how many minutes make an hour. Can any, um, any student here tell me, put it in the chat. I don't know if anybody's on YouTube and doing anything, but uh, it's very silent up in here. I don't like silent boys and girls. Be Nobody on YouTube as yet. Okay. Anybody in, on in here want to tell me um, how many... Um, what is an hour? All right, Nadia. Thank you very much, Nadia. 60 minutes is equal to one hour. Now, let me see who is going to complete this task for me now. Jack took two fifths of an hour and his sister took two thirds. Who took longer to finish? You're going to tell me how, how long each person take so that we can determine who finished, who took longer. You can put it in the chat. Okay. Boy, Sharika, you look like you're the only one on here, man. All the other boys and girls gone home. Okay. The sister took. Mm-hmm. I see. I see them posting on YouTube here. I see Child of the King say Jack. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, it's saying Anna. But guys, remember, we need justification. Give us a little explanation as to what you're saying. Exactly. Exactly. Give us a little explanation. Tell me why. How did you arrive there? Because that's how pet goes. Okay. I'm seeing all different kinds of answers. I'm just going to turn on my light because where I'm at is getting a little bit dark. I'm seeing Novelet McDermott here saying two fifths of 60 minutes is 24 minutes. Uh -huh. two, thirds, two thirds of 60 minutes is 40 minutes. So the sister took longer. Okay. And I'm I've been, yes. Yes, I'm seeing Tia Tia saying Jack took 24 minutes and Anne took 40 minutes. Good. All right. So you find, so now we know that 
40 over 60. And, and guess what happened, boys and girls? You, 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 your teacher get this. The teacher gave this to you. And you just want to show off. You understand what I'm saying? You just um, think there. You can now just put 12 over 24. You just write proof. And you put your 12 over, over your 60. You reduce it and see if you get back two fifths. You put your 40 over your 60 and you reduce it to its lowest term and see if you get back to say when you're um two thirds, when your teacher sees that your teacher gonna say, uh uh, -uh no man, mm -mm, this child is on the ball. Do not be afraid, boys and girls, to show your teacher that you know what you're doing. You understand? So for the childhood said that Jack took 24 um 24 minutes and and um and took 40 minutes you are absolutely correct give yourself a clap for that i'm proud of you all right now number two mom bought a loaf of bread it was sliced into 20 pieces if she gave dad four slices and my sister three slices what fraction of the bread remains all right mm-hmm Mm-hmm. Okay. I am okay. We have moved on to the number two question now, guys. We're on number two. We are finished with very good Sharika. Sharika is on the ball. Sharika, could you explain to me how you get your answer, sweetheart? Go ahead and tell me how what you did. Just put it in the chat. Type it in the chat. I'm waiting on you to see. You tell me exactly what you did. Okay, very good. How is it going on on YouTube, Miss? Anybody um, saying I'm anything? Seeing, I'm seeing Shanae, Kalia, Tia Tia. I'm seeing a lot of them saying 13 out of 20. Okay, all right. Um, let me see what was said a while ago. Okay, add dad's and sister amount, then subtract by 20. Hmm. I see yeah. some workout here. You see workout? What you say? I, I see. I see Novelette McDermott saying twenty out of twenty take away seven out of twenty is equal to thirteen out of twenty. Ah, oh, I love that. I see it here so too. I see it here so. Sharika Small is on the ball. I think Miss Um, there's a late there's a a, a num a, a, no I kind of miss it, a person. Yes, Miss Langford Jackson. But I prefer to use the word from instead of by. When we are doing math, some words are related to multiplication and all of that. Very good. Now, why I ask parents, if you notice I ask the children to work out and, and, and explain, this is what um, our PEP curriculum is asking us to do. Now, let me explain something to you. We could give a question like this, right? And this question could value, let's say, three marks. If it values three marks, we do not want our arm. You should just give us 13 out of 20s remaining. We want you to work it out. Show us step by step how you arrive at your answer. Here's the reason why um, parents and, and children Sometimes, and I've seen it on many occasions, sometimes the children know the correct answer. They are doing the steps and working it out step by step. But in the final part, they write the wrong answers. Let's say they were supposed to write 13 over 20 and they put 14 over 20. Now, do you think the child is going to lose all three marks? No, the child is not going to lose all three marks. The child may get two marks. The, uh, the, the final answer was, a one, was one mark. So if the child just gave 13 over 20, then all the child is going to get, even though the answer is correct, the child is going to get one out of three, which is a third. Understand? So this is the reason we ask. They want to know that your child is able to, 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 um, explain their answers 
Sometimes the explanation may take um, a little calculation. Sometimes it may take, um, you know, um, writing out sentences. Whichever way it takes, we will be able to give you the full three marks. So two children can do that math and the two of them get it right, but one get more marks than the other. Am I right, Mrs. Miss Sims? You're so right. Yes, they need to show. So don't forget that, um, boys and girls. Now for a party, very good, right. Very good, um, I think it's Tashana, thank you. For a party, dad bought, sorry about the weed there, four different types of pizza. Each was divided into 12 pieces. If there are 16 persons at the party, uh-huh, how many slices each can get? I don't even want you to put any one answer in the thing. Uh-uh, no, Miss, no, I'm Shelly Ann. Mm -mm. Uh-uh, I want working out. I want you to work it out. This is fractions, you know? This is fractions. Mm -mm. No, mm -hmm. How many, for a party, four different types of pizza. So that about four pizzas, all right? Okay, 16 persons at the party. How many slices um, will each person at the party get? Mm-hmm, okay. All right, Candice, you're on fire. You are on fire, mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely right, Candice, mm-hmm. I like that, can I get some more answers? All right, I see Sharika, mm-mm, Sharika, go back to the drawing board, sweetheart. Go back to the drawing board. Very good attempt. I would have given you is even one mark for that. Go back to the drawing board. Mm-hmm. All right. So I'm seeing um Shelly Henry. Could you explain to me how you get that? Tell me how you get that. Would you like her to open her mic and explain? Yes, yes. Open your mic and explain to me. Yeah. Hold up, Sharika. Thank you. See you. You're correct. She, she's going to talk. Miss, what was the question again, please? Ooh. You sent in an answer, yes. right? Yes, ma'am. Now, while your answer is correct, yes, I want to know how you get 60 divided by um 12. you said six what was it 60 pieces 12 12 times 5 equals 60 and they divided to the, the 60 by 5 by 12 and you get five okay but it's five in the in in, in the problem no is five is the what the answer please repeat the and the question again please all right let me, read, um, let me read back the question for you there. For a party, Dad yes. bought four different types of pizza. All right? So he bought four pizza. Each was divided into 12 pieces. If there are 16 persons at the party, how many slices each can get? You sent in 60 divided by 5 is... Um, 60 divided by 12 is equal to 5. Sorry, I got it. I got it wrong. I didn't hear the complete. Sorry. Okay, sweetheart. All right. All right. All right. All right. Because it, 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 yes. So you can go back to the drawing board. Thank you. Yes, Anybody yes. else? Anybody else? Want to open your mic and tell me how you get your answer? I see some here on YouTube. I'm seeing... Um... Uh, Tanisha Bentley saying 4 times 12 is equal to 48. 48 divided by 16 equals 3. I see Kevon, but I'm not seeing what those numbers mean. I see Kevon saying 12 divided by 4. Okay, that one has gone as I was reading. So I'm seeing Dana saying 4 times 12 equals 48. And if there are 16 persons, I would divide 48 by 12, and that would be equal to 4. So that is what Dana Paul is saying. Okay, but is um 48 divided by 12? Okay, so she, but how many persons Dana sharing the thing for? 
ask Dana to go back to the drawing board. How many persons is she sharing the pizza for? All right, so she said that there are 16 persons, so she would mm. divide a 48 by 12. Okay, mm -hmm. what do you what she's saying? Yeah, okay, all right. Um, anybody want to jump in and help out Dana a little? Um, good afternoon, good afternoon, Miss Langford. Um, I got it's four different types of pizza, and they said yes. each of the pizza divided by um into 12 pieces so you'll have to multiply the 12 by 4 which is 48 and Good. if they said it has to be shared among 16 persons you divide 48 16 into 48 which will give you three very good that's the absolute correct answer each person at the party will get three slices of pizza all right i guess that was where dana was going but instead of dividing by 16 to go back and divide by 12. That's why she get the four. But that's very good attempt. You would still get a mark because guess what happened? You have showed working. All right. Now this one is easy. If Karen slept for three eight of a day, how many hours did she sleep? What's the first thing we need to find out here? How many hours are there? It's who's so bright? It's who's so bright? Tell me your name. Who is so bright? Who is so bright? All right. All right. So let's, so, um, since you're not telling me, but you are correct. So how many hours are in a day, please? 24 hours are in a day. 24 hours in a day. So now please tell me, um, tell me now how many hours did Karen sleep? Work it out for me. Karen slept for nine hours. Okay. Oh, somebody in this place is bright. Somebody in this room is bright. Good. That is the thing. And you are right. You found three eighths of 24. Mm? So three eighths is a fraction of 24. So um, the person slept for nine hours. All right. How many hours was a person awake? Anybody want to tell me that? 15 hours. And um, it seems you're going to have to give that child some kind of gift, you know? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you have to give that child something. No, man. We have a scholarship in the making. There is a scholarship in the making. I like that. 15 hours. And you see how quick the child went? I like that. Very good. And boys and girls, like I said, you could even go on to explain that. All right? Beautiful. I love that. I'm wrapping up because it's time and where I'm at is getting done. Mom, last, last one, mom baked a dozen cookies. She sold each for $50. Mm-hmm. If she made $400, what fraction of the cookies uh, was sold? What fraction was sold? Wow, this one seemed to be a toughie. I'm giving you time to work this one. Mom Baker does the cookies. Uh-huh. She sold each for $50. If she made $400, what fraction of the cookies was sold? Mm-hmm. Wow. What is it going on on YouTube, miss? Right. I see Tia Tia saying 400 divided by 50 is equal to 8 and 8 twelfths or two third cookies was sold. You... All right. Repeat? Yes. All right. You want me to repeat? Okay. Let me do that. Mom baked a dozen cookies. Hmm? Miss Eat cookie, miss. <laughs> 
<laughs> Remember the, fraction, fractions. Yeah, the question asks what fraction of the cookies uh, were sold. Miss and guess what happened? No, no, no. Uh -uh. You see, because you guys are so bright, I want that fraction in its lowest terms. Sorry, I'm not taking any, that answer. Can you You're repeat the bright. question, please? All right, let me repeat. Sorry, I'm so sorry. My apologies. Mom baked a dozen cookies. She sold each for $50. If she made $400, that means that she didn't sell off each. What fraction of the cookies was sold? It's over 12. It's two thirds. Or two thirds. Wow. Eight over 12. And yes, two thirds was sold. If two thirds was sold, what fraction remains? What fraction one third, miss. Yes. One third, miss. One third, because two thirds plus one third you the whole. Beautiful. Let me tell you, I, 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 I'm sorry, I never put some more questions because you guys just wrap up these questions like, like that, huh? Very good, Zaire. Very good. You guys have done extremely well, and I, I'm absolutely proud of you. Now, before I go, I'm just going to ask you, please. Miss Estelle, what's my name? Miss uh? Estelle, what's my name? If I still want your name? Yes, miss. What's your name? Robin. Hi, Robin. <laughs> oh, no. Robin, you, have, you are the one who has been answering most of the questions. Yes, <laughs> You know, answer most of them, I would just have one year ago, and you answer some of them. So if you say yes, I'll lie, I'll tell you. All right, guys. <laughs> Mommy, do that. Mommy, please do leave, leave my Robin alone. Mommy, please leave my Robin alone. <laughs> but it, it takes guts to come on and hear and work them out and answer. So we want to applaud our children. Very good, um, boys and girls. You have done a splendid job. Please, I am asking you, boys and girls, just be attentive when mommy and daddy or your, your older siblings are doing stuff. Watch what they're doing. Ask questions. You see them sharing things? Ask questions. You see them, um, anything, anything that you see them doing in the home, right? Right? Mommy said to do something. And it takes them 15 minutes. What fraction of the hour did it take? Get your pencil and paper and begin to work it out. Fraction and math. Math on a whole is part of your everyday life. As a matter of fact, Miss Sims put on this presentation. Each teacher got a specific time in which to work. So we all work a fraction of the power, all right? So it was four of us, so it was divided into four. So I get the last part, somebody get that part, and so forth. So um, that is math, that is fraction. Do not be afraid to, to um, explore these things and use them. When you're driving um, and mommy or daddy go to the gas station, look at the gas tank, see how much gas is in there. And when they finish buying, look how much, how, how, did they buy a quarter tank? Did they buy a half tank? Did they buy a three quarter tank? When it is at a quarter, should mommy and daddy go and get gas now? Because they're going to go this distance. You see how much coming to everything, boys and girls? Mommy said, time for you to go to your bed. Mommy, give me 10 more minutes. Okay. You can't be there 20 minutes later because you asked for 10 more minutes. You understand? So these are some of the things that you need to do. And don't forget, boys and girls, when you are going to answer your questions, do not just write down one answer. Write out and explain. Show step by step by step what you're doing. This way, your teacher will know that you understand. When you write and the teacher look at it and say, uh-uh, uh-uh not so clear it's not so clear so they can call you and say okay this is where you went right and this is where you went wrong miss, and you can correct it yes sweetheart miss what what different like miss 
What if you don't want? Like to write. But, but, all right, let me ask you a question. You're a bright student, aren't you? Yes, Robin, yes. good. Yes, do, you yes. like, do you like to be the first to come first in your class? Yes, miss. Good. So let's say now the teacher gave you five maths to do. Mm? They give the class five maths. And the teacher said, each of these math value three marks. So if you show me working, you write them out, write out your answers and so forth, you're going to get full three marks. If you don't, you're going to get one mark. Would you like the, the boy or girl in the class that you are brighter than get more than you? Hmm? Would you want to come last in the class just because you don't want to write? No, miss. Good. Do no, you miss. want to go? Do you want what? to go to the high school of your choice? Yes, miss. Good. So all you need to do is just to work out what the teacher said. Because it's not no long writing. Teachers don't really have the time to read out. It's 20 of you in the class. You know how much writing the teacher will have to read? All the teacher wants you to do is to say, step one, this. Step two, that. Step three, that. And if you want to impress the teacher some more, you just say, proof. I did this and did that. And that's how I get my answer. And if I do this and do that, I will get back that. Simple, easy peasy. The teacher can say, wow, he's a smart kid. Isn't that what you want? So give the teacher what he wants. Any more questions, boys and girls? Our parents, any more questions? Any questions you want to ask? Okay. I'm not hearing any questions. Miss Sims, I want to thank you for inviting me to be one of your speakers here this evening. Right. And I hope that the presentations from all four of us um, prove to be beneficial to both parents and children and know that they can call on you and ask if they want another thing like this where we can dig down deeper and show you some questions that you can ask, the inability, some question that they will ask and how to work it out and how to find it out. You just never know. Right. It, it come in handy. <laughs> so thank you again, parents, for listening and for participating. Thank you, Miss Sims, for the inv invitation. Truly appreciate it. But, thank you so much, Imogene Cummins. Yeah. Thank you so much. I should thank you for availing yourself to be here. And yeah. time is far spent, but I want to thank you, parents and students, for paying attention and you know being cooperative. Let's hold a minute for Mrs. Vassal Erskine. But before we go to Mrs. Vassal Erskine with the vote of thanks, what I want to point your attention to, I sent a link in the chat for you to give feedback or to respond to some questions. So that at the end of the session, if we need to reach you, we are able to. So please click on that link and complete. And for the students who are taking their performance task, join me tomorrow at 3 p.m. as we explore performance task on YouTube. So the link is there and you can go on the channel, click on it whenever we, are, we have started. If you have not yet subscribed, remember to subscribe so that you know when we are going live so you can always join in on our live sessions. Over to Mrs. Vassal Erskine. All right. On behalf of our parents, I would like to express gratitude to Miss Ms. Copes for engaging us on the concept of telling time. Mrs. Richards, for the valuable information on how we can teach money in the home. Mrs. German, for giving us useful tips and for sharing virtual manipulative that we can use to help our students at home with the concept of measurement. Last but not least, Ms. Cummings, who taught us more about fractions and the importance of giving a detailed explanation of your answers in math. This session has been informative and engaging. Presenters, 
You have all done an exceptional job in delivering useful and relevant teaching strategies and information. Now to our parents, thank you for participating and supporting this session. I really enjoyed the games that you have created earlier. So we know that we have some creative parents here. And I want you to continue to support your child or children, children at home as we all partner to achieve the same results, mastery in the subject area. Again, thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Mrs. Basil Erskine. So now we are at the end and I would like to say thank you once again to everyone